Let me take my hat off to you real quick. <laughs> Let's do Holy that. shit, dude. Oh my guy. You, you don't understand how insane that was watching that case. I can't side. wait to see that back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen any of social media right now? No, I have not. They're going, uh, they're going fucking insane. I love it. I love it. That's what we want to hear, man. <laughs> okay, let's run it up. First of all, let me take this, or sorry, let me take the opportunity here to start this interview. I'm going to take my cap off to you, Mr. CJ Vergara. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so you come out, first of all, you walk out to Vicente Fernandez. You're screaming El Rey at the top of your lungs. Yeah. Uh, I watch you get in the cage, and you're jumping up and down, and you're screaming, and I'm like, Lord, please don't let this man blow his gas tank before yeah, the fight yeah, starts. Yeah, yeah. The fight starts, and you get clipped with, it looked like a spinning wheel kick. And then... Is that what it was? It looked Damn, like I didn't it, even yeah. see that one. Yeah. And then uh, from there... I mean, for the people that don't know what it's like to be rocked, first of all, you got to explain that to me. Does everything just zone in? It feels like a dream. It feels like if you have deja vu, right? Yeah. It feels like deja vu. It feels like you're reliving this moment that's already happened in the same way that it's already happened. But the second that I start to kind of like give into that deja vu, my legs start to get a little more wobbly. So there was a uh, there was a second there when he clipped me that I thought to myself, well, damn, here, I guess I'm going to go out swinging. He got me. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I had that thought, I felt my legs kind of buckle back up underneath me. And I said, you know what, let me get on my bicycle and just run away from this guy for a bit until I get my bearings back. And is it is it almost like a tunnel vision when you're running like that? Like you can't hear the crowd, you can't hear nothing like that? Exactly. I could just feel this man's thirst for blood. I mean, I could see it in his eyes. I could feel his he he had it right here in his fingertips and I could I just saw the look in his face and I could feel that pressure coming off of him and I thought, man, I just need to I thought I knew I was faster than him. I thought I need to get away from this guy for a few more seconds, get my legs under me and then we'll reassess from there. At what point in that first round did you get your legs back under you? It was um, it was towards the end for sure. When we when we kind of grappled up for a second and we clinched, I felt my legs back under me. But every time he would kind of like touch me or something, I felt like that regaining of the deja vu experience happened. But luckily, my cardio was in such good shape that my legs weren't were letting me go down. And then I got to shout out your corner because I mean it takes a whole team for you to come out and and reestablish yourself and you know calm yourself down between rounds. What were they telling you between rounds? So my coach Pete has a, a very very frank and upfront direct way. Of, of getting you know getting me to settle back in and when I sat down he said listen that's all he's got he threw everything he had at you everything he had is gone and he's gassed and you're not you're still here so I need you to go out there start putting pressure on him stop giving him so much space to do what he wants to do so this guy's throwing spinning heel kicks and I'm getting away from it giving him the range that he needs to continue to walk in towards me and so I tried to make those adjustments as soon as I went in there and it's like I always tell people I'm just these guys avatar they got a controller in the corner and I do what they say when they say it so let's talk about the crowd as well because San Antonio was popping. I mean, it was right? a, it was it this is lit out here, my guy. <laughs> it is lit. Listen, second fight on the card, they're going absolutely bananas for you. And I mean, to get a finish like that, it's got to be a surreal experience. Like, have you settled down yet? Have you realized, like, oh my God, that really just happened? Yeah, whenever uh, whenever I got off the cage for a second, I started walking around and I almost started crying because I, I felt that full circle moment hit me all at once, and it felt like uh, it felt like like fire inside of my chest and all of these things that I've been dreaming and speaking into existence all these years it just kind of like sat on me for for a moment and you know I feel like it's going to come in waves and I know that I've got you know harder battles up ahead but for right now I'm just here and I'm present and I'm just ready to enjoy this moment I mean you could almost make a movie about stuff like this right you, you grow up here you start the backyard fighting and now you come in here and you almost get finished like you're this close to getting finished in the first round and then you come back and you get the stoppage in the second I mean right they they, they make movies about this kind of stuff hey man I'm just here to paint the picture you know I'm just an artist out here and you know like that fight played out the way my life has played out things haven't always gone my way I've I've had to overcome a lot of injuries I've had to overcome a lot of hardships just to be able to be in the position that I'm in right now but I stand here now complete and ready to take on any any obstacle that is in front of me and I always tell people if I'm conscious I'm fighting back you're gonna have to put me to sleep to stop me and there's uh, another clip that's circulating online. Your opponent came back. Uh, he saw you in the backstage there. You guys kind of embraced. That. Did you guys say anything to each other? It was just like, hey, good fight? Or? There was a, a strange mutual respect that I had with Daniel all week. And, and at first, I thought it was a bit of a Trojan horse that he was putting in front of me, like, you know, being the nice guy and then going out there. and, and But 
<clears throat> it seemed very genuine, and I and I was very accepting of it the, the entire time. So after the fight, he came up and he said something in Portuguese, which his coach translated, which is pretty incredible. He said, "Your daughter and my son have the same birthday." Oh wow! And um, and the, I, I don't know. There was something strange about the connection that I felt to Daniel. This whole camp, I felt sounds weird, but it was like uh, this connection that we had. Like, man, this was this was destiny for both of us to meet here the way we're gonna do. And if you win, if I win, I feel like you know this is. This is what was meant to happen. So when he told me that, I was like, man, that makes sense. You know, For us to have the fight that we had, it's just like you said, it's poetic. It's, it's like a movie. You make movies about stuff like this. Listen, if I had 50 Gs in my pocket, I'd hand it over to you right now. But I, I mean, I, if I had to guess, I would you think. Got, you got five Gs? <laughs> <laughs> no my man's going to shake my man's gonna shake me down here. Oh, CJ Vergara, you're going to have a lot of new fans. Anything else to add out there to the people out there that watched this fight, that got inspired by your performance tonight? Absolutely. Listen, uh, things rarely happen the way that we want them to happen. If you have a plan A, don't ever listen to anybody trying to get you to, to, to go for that plan B. I burned that ship a long time ago, and I'm standing right here when I should have never been right here. And if you're seeing this, if you believe in it, if you know that it's in your heart, don't ever stop no matter what anybody says. Listen, brother, I'll take my hat off to you once again. Congratulations, and uh, go enjoy the rest of the night. Appreciate man. you, brother. Thank you.